Hello, and welcome to another video. This video, we're going to go over the page check out. Um, I almost thought my SSD had died, but somehow it's uh, it's completely fine. Yes, the um, SATA cable got loose, so hopefully that's fixed. Um, there's one thing I want to say about this game is that this healer, and she actually supported this team. Oh, his more on healing instead of running around like crazy. Obviously, he's got to get out of here and he's going to die, but. Um, I see this person all the time, and they spend more time trying to irritate people rather than actually heal. And I'm not really sure why people do that. Like, I, I get you trying to do what you can, but you're actually just pumping raw HPS and doing things when it's convenient. So for example, to have a stand and jump on you, or uh, there's a primary stand for if you can get a concussion assault. And somebody that's actually going to matter. I can understand it, but when you go out of your way to do that stuff as a healer, neglecting all heals and neglecting all team support, it is not the best idea. It's also really good to not panic, just run and not cast and I see a lot of healers do this. Don't do this. I'm mentioning here is you know double heal versus no heals, you know. That's kind of how matchmaking is. Uh, sometimes when I'm playing DPS, I think we actually ended up having a healer, but he really wasn't healing for anything. I wish it's fine. I mean, I'm keeping most of their team busy, and there's not really anything for me to do. Uh, my alternative option is to either attack their pylon or AFK uh, at ours, because, I mean, as you can see in mid, there's a lot of people there. I can't really get orbs or something objectively speaking. I can do other than be a distraction, so I just you know, do that. What else can I do? You know? uh, this is the life of a frontline melee and generally a DPS player. Anyway, moving on from that, uh, we did get some patch notes uh, a little to go. Uh, one thing I'm going to go over real quick is that sorcerers can talents that were removed in 6.0, or that used to be in 6.0. Going into 7.0, he used to also be there for uh, Assassin, I think. Um, this talent is really good, I and mean, it's a nice utility for Killer. I don't think it should exist for DPS, and to be honest, I don't think it should exist at all. It was good that it was removed. Basically, to give you a TLDR of how it works, it is similar to Taunt, however, there's no way to negate it. So, as if you got taunted, but nobody you hit will like negate the taunt. So for example, if you get taunt in PvP, you can just hit the person that taunted you and it'll bypass the uh, the damage reduction. Um Flash Q won't do that and then also it'll last for 10 seconds. So there'll be nothing you can do to get rid of the damage reduction. Even if you break it, it still won't get rid of it. And on top of that, um, it'll reduce the cooldown of Flash Q by 10 seconds and it scales with alacrity. So high alacrity lightning plus polarity shift it's going to be around a 30 second cooldown. Uh, that was really obnoxious. <laughs> and it's going to be really obnoxious. It's going to be a lot more CC from Sorcerer than before. And they're going to probably try to prioritize it a lot more than what they already do. Because they're now going to know that it actually reduces your damage. Outside of just stunning you. So it's going to be incredibly helpful for them. And they're already doing pretty well. Excuse me, at least in general. Um... Also, with the change, this doesn't suddenly make them viable or good. And like a tank heal kind of situation, it, it makes them definitely better than like a, a DPS heal, like arena or a tank DPS uh, thing. But when it comes to uh, tank and heal matches where it's competitive, where you're playing like the the most meta specs like PT, WPT or PT operative, you know, like stuff that are just really strong. It's didn't just suddenly make the sorcerer more viable, at least in like DPS wise, because you're still prone to like things like AP, rage, you know, like those classes that are able to just constantly slam and uh, pretty much glue themselves to you. I will lower their burst, but it's not, I don't think it's going to do enough to lower their burst to the point that the class wouldn't be a detriment and a guard hawk, pretty much. Um, there was a brief period in 
So I just want to know where you thought that uh, running a, a range was like super great or whatever. Uh, in reality, it's just for whatever reason over in EU, they had issues with hitting their range players. If they would desync, they wouldn't be able to hit them. So they just usually wouldn't try and they would assume that, you know, they got outplayed, the range is better kiter. It's, it was not really not the case, especially on NA. It really was not the case at all. And pretty much every range, it didn't matter who it was, even like the EU players that came over here and played range. And when I played on EU, the range were not really able to play. And it's just simply because of the fact that things like AP exist and they will run down range and it is brutal. So with that as a fact, um, there are a lot of tools that were in the game previously, aren't in the game anymore. So for example, pull DR is gone. I think pull DR should come back in place of the sap strength, I guess you could call it, for um, electric I think that shouldn't exist. I think we should get pull DR. That'd be a lot better, and especially for healer, and it'd be very valuable. And it would give some thought process to uh, gameplay rather than actually just you know, spamming your uh, electric on cooldown. Because that's pretty much what's going to happen. Anyway, uh, carrying on with Rage, if you haven't played Rage before, um, there is a zero second cooldown. Um, I guess you could call it in Rage, uh, combat focus or whatever it is. The ability on my R, it resets when you get out of combat. Um, there's a zero second one. I don't like it at all, especially in PvP. I like the uh, the one I'm currently using. Allows you to dominate the side twice, so that basically means you get 200% critical hit chance on your reaching burst and smash. Uh, when you get out of combat, this ability actually resets. So you're able to really chain kills, especially in situations where you're just running over people. Uh, Rage is like the ultimate noob buster, which is pretty fun. And it also is why it feels really oppressive when the enemy team has a lot of damage and they have a couple of rage jugs that aren't even like. You know, one of them. That's pretty good. Uh, it'll feel very oppressive and very hard to deal with. Uh, which can be a lot of fun. I've played a lot of Rage. Uh, I try not to get burned down on it. I've been playing a lot of... Uh, a lot of mixture of just all kinds of random things because I've been trying to get like every spec, uh, at least a commentary, so you guys can have something that you can look at and can catch up with. Uh, if you guys have questions, obviously, with classes, or you want to see more of a certain class, just let me know. I'm more than happy to... We're happy to do that. Um, but outside of the, the sorcerer change, um, it's going to be controversial. I don't like it. A lot of other people don't like it. Uh, but it, it, it's going to happen. And I just want people to be aware that, yes, it's good, but it's not going to make them, uh, how to put it, it's not going to make them like at top of the level the best, if that makes sense. They're still going to be very killable. They're still going to be very, uh, very easy to deal with if you're playing the right class and you actually have support heals. Uh, obviously, when they're stacked, they're going to be much more annoying. But generally, overall, all it's going to do is make the class more annoying and more abusive when it's stacked, as the class is already fit. So when it is stacked. And it's going to increase its uh, viability, obviously, and like, Matches where it's pure DPS, uh, matches where it's just heal and DPS, just tank DPS, but when it's both tank and DPS, or tank and heal, then DPS, those matches just play out a little bit different. It's classes that thrive in those, just like, um, generally classes with decent uh, defensive, so like, say, lethality operative, APPT, for example, or top ones that come to mind. But there are some other classes that you know, are relatively decent. Obviously, again, you know, range classes usually do end up getting trained, so obviously the value it's not going to be that great because you're not going to be able to cast anyway. And as a range defense, you need to be able to constantly cast. And if you can't constantly cast, you're not really doing anything. Uh, other than that, this game's coming to an end. There's not really much to say about it or even think about it. It's just a game that uh, nobody is really fighting or fighting back or doing damage to the in the beginning, like they, they, they kill me, right? And it's just because I'm like the only one there, uh, which is fine. I don't really care. I just wish that you know the heals were 
you know, split between our teams a little bit better. Uh, but there's nothing you can really do about that. Then as for the other changes that are about to happen, uh, Arsenal is getting a buff, and then we also have um, some P or not PT, some tank tactical changes, which is cool. Uh, other than that, if you guys have any questions about Rage, feel free to leave them in the comments.